In this video workshop, I'm going to give you step-by-step -step playbook on how to make your first $100,000 in business. Before we get into it, please know this is one of the many trainings that I provide our exclusive creative entrepreneur community to future pro group that I've decided to make public as we continue to grow our community. So if you're interested in joining our community, click the link in the description. Now let's start the training. Hey, welcome to the 100 to 100 challenge. It is my intention to get 100 pro members to blast past $100,000 in revenue. And you can apply everything that we're talking Talking about and just change the numbers to suit your needs. So for example, if you're in that $500,000 range, you want to get to a million dollars, just change out the numbers. The plan should work. So the first part is about understanding goal setting. Today, we're going to be talking mostly about people who are selling professional services and coaching. If you make logos, you do branding, marketing materials, social media content stuff, this is it for you. So it is pretty straightforward. Okay. So we've done this before. The math will always be the same. And there's reasons why we do what we do. And it's to make things simple. In order to make a hundred thousand dollars a year you got to bring in ten thousand dollars a month because 10 times 10 equals 100 now we could do this by 12 but it gets really complicated but the reason why we don't do 12 months is because you have downtime you have bad months and you need to take a vacation and do things that are important to you. So we're going to limit ourselves to 10 months of working with the extra cushion of the two months if we need it. So if you should hit $100,000 in 10 months, fantastic. You can cruise for the rest of the year or you can hit stretch goals entirely up to you. So how do we do that to get to 10,000? Yes, 10,000. Well, these are the things that we thought were the most common to this group. Many of you are coaches and doing consulting. Maybe you're doing advisement, strategic work, whatever it is. You sell things pretty much by the hour for the most part, unless there are packages that you're selling. There are many people in this space that are doing logo and identity design work, branding, a lot of content creators out there, content marketing, social media, video production, post-production, and then web design and development. And I listed it this way because there's you're gonna see a pattern happen here. So we look at cost per unit or cost per hour or the deliverable that you make. So let's look at that a little bit closer. So if you're a coach or a consultant and that's what you do, you have an hourly rate. And so in order for you to get to your 10,000 mark, let's look at the hourly rate and how Changing your hourly rate will allow you to work less and earn more. So if you charge $100 an hour, you'd have to work 100 hours a month, which isn't horrible, but it's a lot. It really is a lot to in order for you to get to 10K. And so you can see that if you double your rate, $200 an hour, then you work half as much. The math just works out because it's math. And if you were able to charge, say, $500 an hour, then you would just need to work 20 hours a month. So there's a lot of incentive here for you to just move your prices up a little bit. So if you're at 100, go to 150. And a lot of times, if you're just selling it by the hour, a $50 bump is not going to break your client. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that, but every time you move that dollar north per, per hour, you're gonna have to work less. And who wouldn't like to work 20 hours a month? That means you're basically working five hours a week four weeks in a month, five hours. That's pretty good. I kind of think of it like this because I do do private coaching. I could probably do two a day and I wouldn't want to do that back to back every single day because it's too much. It's exhausting for me. So in, in for order for me to control that, what I do is I just raise the rate until the demand and supply of me, which is fairly limited, works out. The math is really straightforward. Let's talk about deliverables now. Now you could do deliverables as a coach. For example, you can say, I will help you to lose 20 pounds and put on 30 pounds of muscle. And this is what I'm gonna charge to get there i don't care about how long it takes so then you're switching over from hour to a deliverable and let's take a look at the dynamics and how that works so the deliverable looks something like this right so if you charge say a thousand dollars per logo that means you need to make 10 logos a month if you charge five thousand dollars per identity system you need to do two of those a month and if you build a website let's just say a website is ten thousand dollars and you can deliver one per month then that would be just one now if you do really big websites say like twenty thousand dollars per website you just have to do one every two months so again, the math works out. So you can see here, what we'd like to do is for you to work less while charging more. That's the goal. So for some of you, you're going to have to take a look at your rates and say, well, in order for me to get to 10K, there's no way I can do a $500 logo anymore because that means I'd have to do a new logo every single working day because I'd have to make 20 of them. And that's just too much. You can't do quality work if you're just turning out stuff really fast. There's one other model here because when I was uh, talking this over with Parshel, she's like, well, I do a little bit of both. Like I do some strategic work. So we do course creation. We do some planning with the clients and then I produce 
produce that for them. Well, this is wonderful. So you're going to do some kind of hybrid. So you, you don't have to pick one thing from the menu in case it doesn't suit your, your specific business. So let's take a look at that. So she's like, I think I can do one or two courses a month. And I just looked at it like one course. Okay. She has to work through the materials with the client. Let's say she charges $200 an hour. And so she works 20 hours. That's going to put her at 4k. So she has a deficit of 6k. That means to do the video production part in order for her to hit her numbers, she's going to have to charge $6,000 to shoot the video and to edit it and to get it set up on Teachable or one of those platforms. So you just do the math. However it works out for you, it's hybrid, it's one thing, it's multiple things. You just know that at the end of the, each month, it has to hit $10,000 or you don't have a really good shot of hitting your $100,000 goal. Now, I'm gonna show you this matrix here. There are four quadrants here of the different kinds of things you can do. You can do things that require a lot of work and you have to service a lot of clients. That's the high labor, high volume quadrant. Generally speaking, you will wanna stay out of that. And then you see the bottom right quadrant there, low labor, so it's mostly thinking, not a lot of production. Low volume mean I have to service very few clients. Obviously, you want to stay away from high labor, high volume. I will put that in all the Fiverr categories where people are just cranking through projects. They're like doing two logos a day and getting paid almost nothing. Stay away from that. The other two you can consider the high labor, low volume. It's very labor intensive. And then there's low labor, high volume. That's just like the assembly line. It's easy to crank out stuff. And so the only way you can make money is to take on a lot of clients. I would like to avoid that as well. Let's take a look at it. So this is a simple spreadsheet that you need to look at. So the number is always going to be at the same at the end of the month. It needs to be $10,000 a month or more. And if you want to hit $200,000 a year, just double this number, 300,000, triple this number. So if we look at say the activities coaching and you can fill in whatever you want to fill in, what is the price? What are the units you're selling and the quantity for coaching, let's say hundred bucks, you have to sell a hundred hours of coaching to get to 10,000, which for some people is doable. But for me, that doesn't seem to make sense. So you want to up your hourly rate so that you can lower the quantity, the units in which you're selling. Let's take a look at it again in the identity systems. Like if you do ID systems, which is the logo and two or three pieces of collateral, whatever it is that you're making to to build the system, I think the general price that you'd like to get to is to get to $5,000 per ID system. So we're not talking about writing. We're not talking about marketing strategy. We're talking about just a really beautiful symbol mark and its application in the three most used things that your clients need. So if we can get to this place, we just need to then hit two of these things, all right? And once we discover whatever our formula is, we're going to land on something which you know where this is going, the minimum level of engagement. That means that every client that comes to you, this is the threshold. So for example, for some of you who want to be professional speakers, let's just say your number is $10,000. That doesn't need to be your number, by the way. When someone reaches out, you're like, I love your event. I would love to speak, but I have a minimum fee of $10,000 to speak. Does it make sense for us to have a call? Okay. This is what the MLE is all about. It's like your policy and you need to stick to this. And now we're going to move on to the next part because I don't want to just leave you with the goal. We have to do something about it. And so now we're going to talk about marketing. There's two kinds of marketing as far as I know. Outbound and inbound. It doesn't have to be that complicated. One is a push technique. One is a pull technique. I'll leave you to guess which one is pushing and which one's pulling. So outbound looks something like this. It's asking for referrals, building and doing networking like in person and in virtual. Also about cold outreach. The question always is how to ask for a referral. Can you develop and implement a referral program? And the answer is yes, yes, and all these things, okay? The very simple way to ask for a referral is before you finish the job. This is when the feelings are good, when everybody's super happy. And you can also ask for the referral before you start the job, which is kind of crazy. If you listen to the tactic, it makes a lot of sense. So you would say something like this, Mr. and Mrs. Client, it looks like we're all ready to move forward and I'm super excited to start working with you. I'd like to ask you for one last thing. They're like, what? Why would you do this? We're ready to sign and give you money. I am committed to doing a great job for you and I would love for you to give me a referral. And if I do deliver on the things that we ask and you're thrilled with the work, will you refer me to two of your friends who might need what it is that we do? It gives me extra incentive to make sure I deliver. And they're like, wow. So it's kind of also just the icing on the cake for you to close close the sale. That way you've set it up so that 80% of the way into the job, you can say, I want to check in with you. How did we do so far? They're like, we love you. We love you. Everything's great. I'm thrilled. Why do you ask? Well, you remember earlier we asked about a referral. I need to grow my business. And this is predominantly how I get new business is through word of mouth. Are there two friends that you know that could use our services? Yes. 
okay, what are their names? Do you mind? I mean, if you just give me the contact information, I'll just reach out to them directly and reference that we spoke because I don't want to add things to your plate. This is where they're going to say yes or they're going to say no. If they say no, they're going to say something like this. They're going to say, Chris, no, I'm going to do the intro because I need to sing your praises. I really, really appreciate that. So do you mind if I follow up with you in a day or two to see if this has been sent out? Fantastic. That's how you ask for a referral. Now you can create a referral program. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. And I want to caution you that there is a right and wrong way to do this. So when someone gives you a referral, they're acting as your sales rep. Sales rep get paid. Like for the majority of my career making commercials, I paid a sales rep anywhere between seven to 15% of a new job that they brought us. I was thrilled to pay them that because without them, I wouldn't have any work. And so I want you to think about this. What is a new client worth to you? And what are you doing to incentivize people to keep thinking about you? At some level, people genuinely just love you and don't want to have money exchange hands. It cheapens the experience like they were paid for the positive recommendations. So be very careful about how you approach this, okay? As you get bigger and bigger with bigger corporations, this is fairly normal. As you're kind of in this getting to $100,000 program, I would not send them money for the referral. What I would do is just send them a very high touch personalized thank you. As they say, it's easier to keep the client that you have than to go get a new client. And if you're in the new client business, always it's a lot of energy you're gonna expend. That's the referral part. Next part is networking. You're gonna need to generate a list of conferences, events, trade shows, maybe look into your own chamber of commerce. You're going to need to go to these things, but here's your networking checklist. You need to do some research and see who's speaking, what the agenda is, what companies are gonna be there and target three to five companies. You know what they look like, you know something about them so when you see them you make a beeline towards them and you have a conversation better yet i want you to set an appointment with one or more people that are going to be there so you could do something like this you can say mary i see that you're going to be speaking about equity and inclusion at the conference i'd love to chat with you maybe take you out to lunch if you have a few minutes. So now you've taken the pressure off yourself of I don't know what to do. You have someone to see, this is awesome. When you go to see them, hang out with them and you can ask them things like, is there somebody I need to meet that you think I should get together with? Who are they? Oh my gosh, fantastic. So that one becomes a multiple point of contact for you. And here's who I think you should meet. So you're also giving value as well. Make sure you have your business cards ready and your elevator pitch. And of course you're gonna ask for introductions, which I already mentioned. Most of this stuff is gonna happen virtually. You know, listen to people, listen to conversations and then connect with a few people. and the goal is to jump off platform. This happens all the time. I heard you on Clubhouse was really inspired by what you said about how you grew up and how you overcame being bullied. I want to learn more about you. Do you have five minutes to chat and build a relationship? No selling at this point. We're just networking. None of this is about sales, okay? We're just trying to grow who we know. Now let's talk about outreach. Seth Godin writes about it in his book, This is Marketing. Marketing is about the act of converting strangers into friends and friends into clients. So what we need to do is we need to generate warm leads. So this is cold traffic. We're going to heat them up a little bit. We don't know them. We've got to go from cold to warm. What I need you to do is start to engage with people and their content that you want to work with on LinkedIn, specifically on LinkedIn. So when they post something, you need to comment. You need to be in there in that first critical window. They're going to see you right away. So whatever you need to do to turn on bells for notifications. So when they post something, if it's a good post, you should engage with them right away because they're going to start to get to know you. This is critical for name recognition. Let's get into inbound. Inbound is where you draw them to you like a magnet. Your content is so good. This is also referred to as content marketing. Sometimes they're called like you need a lead magnet to do like email tripwire. There's all kinds of terms that marketers use. You draw people to you because you're giving them tremendous value. Another way you can do inbound marketing is to do live coaching. We'll talk about that. Now, if you remember on a call with Mira Kotan wrote a book called, but I'm not an expert. And she said you could build it. You can borrow it or you can be it. Some other people say build, borrow, and buy. So I'm going to focus on the two build and borrow. How do you borrow authority? Well, you can summarize and highlight the learning. So if you're reading a book, you should probably be making a ton of notes and paraphrasing and wrapping that in your own personal story and sharing that with the world and tagging the author where relevant, not to a point of annoying them or harassing them, but this is how you start to build or borrow your authority or borrow authority from others because you're the person who curates like really good content. You should reshare their posts. So if you're a follower of Seth Godin, reshare his post. And the way that you reshare is you need to write something super compelling. And on LinkedIn, don't just hit reshare. Don't do that. That doesn't work. Like it's very low engagement. What you should do is screen capture their posts, post that as an image, write why you think this is really important. And in the comment, share the original post and then tag them on it. You share on social media with your personal insights. Like here's how I've applied this. This is now starting to build from what you borrowed. You know, if you have a podcast and it takes nothing to make a podcast, a lot of people that 
you want to work with that you would pay good money to have them mentor you will accept your invitation to be interviewed on your podcast. You obviously need to have some kind of hook and angle, otherwise they'll say no. But believe it or not, a lot of people will just say yes because they think your podcast is legitimate and has a big audience. So when you're able to interview them, obviously release that content, promote it, talk about it. So now there's this association between you and this amazing person that you really admire. And then mine that content to make micro content, pull out quotes from it, design a framework, do something, add additional value. Don't just share the podcast, go above and beyond. That's what it takes, a little extra effort. Of course, you could live stream with guests. You can host social audio rooms where you're helping to moderate, move the conversation around. So you don't have to be an authority. You can borrow it, come up with an interesting hook, write a few questions and let the other person share their knowledge with the world. And you get the credit for bringing that to the world. Let's talk about building it now. Building is hard, but this is what you eventually need to do. You can't just solely survive on borrowing expertise. You can write posts, case studies, do how to and teach people. A lot of you can already do that now. People love listicles. Top 10 reasons of why your website sucks. Top 10 reasons why people abandon carts. Top 10 reasons why your SEO is out of whack. Top 10 myths, top 10 truths. They're easy to understand and they're condensed pieces of information. People love these things. You can do a live demonstration. Now, some of you are very good at what you do, either in coaching or in Photoshop or video production, whatever it is, lighting demos. If you do live demonstrations, it takes you above everyone else because only people who know what they're doing can do it live. Like I do live role play sales, right? Theoretically, if you or you're listening to me now, you can hear this. Some of that you're like, dude, that guy can talk because I'm doing it live. Like if you can do live music composition, that is the next level. You could do public speaking. Of course, you have the stage effect that Eric Edmeets talks about. Quality of your presentation times the size of your audience equals your level of attraction. The bigger the audience, the bigger your level of attraction. Now, I want you to pick three. This next part might make your head hurt a little bit. They're warning here because of the reality, not the complexity, but the reality of it, okay? You need to build top of funnel awareness. I'll, I'll show you why, because we're gonna do the math, right? So I want you to just to answer this question for yourself right now. What is your close ratio? Meaning for everybody that reaches out to you on a Zoom call or meets up with you in person that you consider a qualified prospect, how many of those people are you closing? Please do not think 100%. It's not possible to do 100%. It could be very high. It could be 60%. It could be 70%. But if you have a qualified lead that has money to spend on services that you create, how often are you able to close those? This number is important. It could be 10%, which you need a lot of work on. And if you're at 20 or 30%, you're doing pretty good. If you're 50% or higher, you're closing at an amazing rate, according to me. So we're going to do a little math here. So you remember before how many units we're going to need to sell or close. So we need to book 50 calls or like 50 hours of coaching to be able to hit our number. Okay, that's one. If you need to sell two identity systems per month, so it would be two units. And then you're going to divide that by your close ratio. So for example, I need to sell two coaching packages a month and I close 50% of the time. So you take two and you divide that by 0.5, which is 50% of the time. And that will equal the number of appointments or people you need to talk to that are qualified. If you're closing at a lower ratio, you'll see that this number is different. So if I need to close two clients a month, I need to talk to four people because half of them are going to sign. And you might need to look at the number of calls you've had in the last six months. So you take the total number of calls and then take the total number of conversions and that'll equal your close ratio. So if you did 20 calls in the last six months and you close 10 of them, your close ratio would be 50%. I hope that makes sense. This is like real basic math here. You do need to look at your numbers. If you have no numbers to work with, we'll just assume your close ratio is 50% for right now. It probably won't be, but let's just assume we'll work with that. So you can just hypothesize. Like you think I'm pretty good at closing. I can close every other client. Great. The next part is we're going to take this and we're going to multiply that number by 10. So in the in the scenario that I just shared with you, I need two clients that have, have signed on with me and I close half of them. I need four appointments. I'm going to multiply that by 10. And that's the number of leads I need to generate. It's daunting because there's this thing called attrition. So the people who express interest in working with you, nine out of 10 times, they're not qualified to work with you. Only one of the 10. That's why we have to multiply this by 10. We're moving cold traffic to warm leads. We're qualified and then we set up the Zoom calls, okay? I'll give you an example. We recently did an Attract Your Dream Client webinar. 10,000 people signed up for that. 10,000 people. I think several hundred people showed up. I think 2,500 people at one point. Of those people, only a small percentage actually sign up for a call with Carrie Green. Of those people, only a small percentage then convert. You see just why this number should be much higher, but I don't want to kill you here. So our goal is to sell 100 bootcamp 
seats. I need to find 100 people who are qualified leads. Now you can see the math. Take the number of appointments, multiply that by 10, and that's how many leads you have to generate. This is the number I need you to focus on and put that as part of your game plan. Now, this is why I said this part is going to be a little daunting. It's going to make your head spin a little bit because you can now realize I'm not generating any leads at all. And that's where the problem is. All right, feature fam, that concludes this training on what you specifically need to focus on to make your first $100,000 in business. If you made it this far, big special thanks to you. And I look forward to potentially seeing you inside our future pro community.